Hey everyone, it is Philip from PR Moves. I know, I know you guys were all clamoring for another Deshaun Watson video, so I'm here to deliver. Just immediately starting off, Tom Pelissario tweeted out earlier today that the Texans have been listening to trade offers for Deshaun Watson and that they want three high picks plus players to trade Watson away. They believe he's a top three quarterback. I believe he's a top three quarterback. Now, before I go into four big trade options for Houston and Deshaun Watson, I do have to point out Deshaun Watson might not play this year because of his legal obligations. Um, if the NFL investigates him, then he might miss significant time. Um, I did put record projections for the team that he's traded to on every single one of these uh, slides. And when you see that, that is assuming Deshaun Watson plays the entire year. And I'll, of course, uh, quickly go over those. So we're going to jump right into it. And let's start off with the Denver Broncos. I know Denver fans have wanted Deshaun for some time now. So this might be exciting for them. Um, they're going to be receiving Deshaun plus a 2023 fourth rounder because they're going to be giving away a little bit more than some of these other teams. And that is two first rounders, one second rounder, Drew Locke and Pat Sertan. Now, basically, Pat Sertan counts as that third high first round pick. Um, I didn't want to give three first rounders. I think if I was Houston, I'd rather take Pat Sertan off the board. Now I do have them finishing 12 and five. Let's quickly jump into that. Um, I already covered the Broncos on a division predictions and I had them going uh, seven and 10. And I basically, the only reason they're going seven and 10 is because I don't think the offense is gonna produce enough in time to keep them as a playoff team. But I think if Deshaun Watson was there and he's throwing to uh, Sutton, Judy, Hamler, Fant, Javante, William. He would have his best offensive crew he's ever had. And then on defense, even with no Pat Sertan, the secondary would be Cal Fuller, Ronald Darby, Michael Ojemudier, um, Bryce Callahan, Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson, Von Miller. So yeah, you're losing what is potentially a long-term generational piece, but I think the Broncos would be Super Bowl contenders for the next year or two, uh, potentially three years with potentially a top five offense and defense, really the only position group on the defense, they're not at least top 10 in is linebacker. And you could even say they're top 10 in terms of overall wide receiver core. They have a super deep wide receiver core. So Watson to you know, the only reason, I don't even think they'd win their division at 12 and five, which is why their record might be the lowest on here. Um, it's not, but it would be actually a pretty low record, even all things considering. Um, compared to some of the other ones you're going to see where I think Watson would single-handedly carry them. I think uh, the Chargers would still probably win 10-plus games. The Raiders will be competitive, whatever. And the Chiefs are still the, one of the best teams in the league. So it'll be hard for the Broncos to go all the way, but they obviously can. And I think Deshaun Watson would immediately make them on par with Kansas City. So that's a trade, 100%. A-plus trade. If this trade went through, I would say... Um, Houston would probably be excited to get Pat Sertan and a upside quarterback in Drew Locke. And then Deshaun Watson would make uh, Houston a, or Denver a Super Bowl contender. So there you go. And that quickly moves us on to number two. We got the Eagles. All right. Eagles giving up a few picks here. So they're giving up their next two first and second rounders. Um, that's four high picks. That's even higher than Pelisario was saying. Um, and they're going to be giving away Jalen Hurts and then uh, backup offensive tackle Andre Dr uh, Dillard. Now, Dillard would probably be a depth uh, tackle swing guard um, behind Laramie Tunzel. And, or he could move over to right tackle. That's also possible. And just play opposite of Tunzel. Jalen Hurts would give a high upside. Um piece uh for the texans offense um could potentially learn from tyrod taylor because tyrod taylor just breathes superstar quarterbacks behind him and then you'd get four picks and um you could potentially do th uh three first rounders and keep all the second rounders if that's more realistic then go for it um but you could probably also get the eagles receiving back a 
uh, third or fourth round pick for this. And I'm not going to talk about the Eagles too much because I made a whole video about that two days ago. So Eagles go 10 and 7. If you want to go see my full Eagles Deshaun Watson breakdown, go see the video from a few days ago. We're going to quickly move on. We got two more teams to cover. And that brings us immediately to the Dolphins, who have kind of always been the, um, like, team that Deshaun Watson's been rumored to. And that would continue here. Um, now, this is actually where two conflicting storylines meet because Xavier Howard, star defensive back for the um, Dolphins, would also want to be on the move. And I think this is a perfect opportunity. If the Dolphins think that it's impossible to bring back Howard, move Howard and get Deshaun Watson. So here I have the Dolphins receiving um, Bradley Roby, who's on the last year of a deal, who is just an okay corner two, corner three type of player, and Deshaun Watson. And the Texans will be receiving back in return. Um, they're two first rounders this year, their second rounder this year. Um, of course, the first rounder they have from San Francisco. And then they'll be getting Tua, who can probably would immediately start, or you could um, put him behind Tyrod Taylor. And then Xavier Howard. And immediately, I think the Dolphins would have the best quarterback in the division. I think they would have J uh, Jalen Waddell, Preston Williams, Devontae Parker. Uh, Will Fuller reunited with Deshaun Watson. Mike Gesicki, their running backs aren't great, but Watson's never had good running backs. And then defensively, they'd still have um, Noah Iginbanehi. They'd have put Bradley Roby in. They would still have a pretty good safety tandem. They would have McCourty with Javon Holland. And then they would have rookie Jalen Phillips coming off the edge. And considering that this well-coached team went 10-6 and six last year, I would say with Deshaun Watson, they'd probably be a 13-win team. Easily have them winning the division. If you want to see my full Dolphins breakdown, go check out the AFC East uh, division breakdown where I have them winning the division. But I think the Dolphins are the best coach team, and I think they're the second best roster behind Buffalo. But I think Buffalo is due for regression. So the Dolphins, I would 100% do I think the Dolphins could win the Super Bowl this year if they uh, pulled off this trade. They absolutely have the weapons and the defensive youth and athleticism to keep Watson in town. And then the final team we are going over is the Washington football team. And that is going to be how Washington will be receiving um, Deshaun Watson. Now, just quickly breaking this down, I do have their projected record being 12 and 5. Um, they're not really sacrificing as much. They are giving away the three high picks which is their 2022 first and then their 2023 first and second round picks. And then they're giving away Taylor Heineke to potentially go and be a quarterback in Houston. If you want them to be giving away Ryan Fitzpatrick, be my guest, or if you want them to give away another piece. Um, and then have them giving away Matt Ioannidis. Uh, Matt Ioannidis is the fifth defensive lineman on the depth chart. He's the third defensive tackle. And they have a few other guys behind him. Um, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. He's one of the best like third down pass rushers in the league is behind Matt Ioannidis on the depth chart. So I actually think Ioannidis is already a trade candidate. Um, and they just ex uh, extended uh, Deron Payne. Wait, was it Deron Payne? John Allen? I think it was John Allen. Um, they extended one of them today. And um, getting rid of Matt Ioannidis in this trade for Deshaun Watson would pair Ioannidis on that defensive line nicely with second uh, second year Ross Blacklock and Whitney Merciless. So I'm not saying that Houston would be competitive, but immediately Washington would be the best team in the division. Uh, Watson would be throwing to Curtis Samuel, Terry McLaurin, um, Cam Sims, um, the kid from North Carolina, Deami Brown, uh, Antonio Gibson would be in the backfield. They have a pretty good offensive line, all things considered. They added Samuel Cosme and Charles Leno, and they could still potentially have a top five defense. So honestly, my favorite team to trade for Deshaun Watson would be uh, Washington. I think Washington would immediately uh, be, I think any team that trades for Deshaun Watson would immediately be a Super Bowl contender. So there you go. That's going to pretty much wrap up the video. I'm going to really appreciate you guys all for sticking through and watching this entire thing. Um, I'm going to get more videos out. Aaron Rodgers made a ton of news today. We're going to talk about that. And uh, just overall, 
We're going to continue to get stuff out through the preseason. Got NFL Game Pass, so we're going to be able to break down some film for the preseason as that goes along. So more exciting things to come. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys all later. Peace out.